Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, you guys ready to play Family Zoo? Let's do it. All right. Name five practices to prevent <laughs> catheter associated urinary tract infection. Appropriate indication. Excellent. Short duration. Short duration if it goes in. Go out. to me. <laughs> this is really a team sport. And it's really important that every member of the team realize how important they are. We're reviewing with second year students who just in a few months will be going out to the floor. That these are really very tangible things that they can do um, as part of the medical team to prevent healthcare associated infections. I think that the concept of antimicrobial stewardship is interesting. It's something I hadn't thought a lot about. I thought you just use an antibiotic, it takes care of the infection. But certain ones can create a new infection or create another problem. So this is part of the curriculum for population health and the practice of medicine, which is perfectly poised at this part in their curriculum because they're finishing up their basic science work and they're going to transition to being clerks in the hospital. So learning about patient safety, learning about medication reconciliation really makes them better stewards for their patients when they start engaging in the care of the people in our community. Many of you will have to explain to some family member that mom, who was getting better, is now in the ICU because they fell. And so to prevent these falls, it's really a team effort. You, as doctors, working with nurses. Each group has to choose two people to go back into the room that we showed you before. You have to identify the fall risk, write it down on a piece of paper, and then come back. Wire and cord was on the floor. That's a tripping uh, hazard. Um, there was Ativan, which is an anti-anxiety medication. Um, the walker was far away from the bed, so she can fall trying to get to the walker. The eighth one is a little hairy. Uh, <laughs> we're not exactly sure on this one. Um, but the IV pole was right next to her bed, and that could kind of cause something there, where she could try to hold on to it, or she wasn't wearing shoes or socks. I guess I didn't realize how many risk factors there were. I knew, like, kind of disparately, there was a lot of, uh, like, uh, carts are at risk, and that people, when they're acutely ill or on medications, are at risk. But I didn't realize how in one room there could be so many risk factors all, all combined. We're really trying to instill basic patient safety values into students, get them right at the beginning of their career. With these kind of exercises, we're not looking to unload textbooks of information. It's more three or four key facts about why patient safety is important, what they can do um, to improve patient safety, prevent medical errors. Um, we want them to be engaged. On admission, 50% of patients have a discrepancy in their medications between what we write for and what they're actually on. Half of patients will have something wrong with what we write for. Patients sometimes don't know what they're taking and whether they should be taking um, the previous drugs or the newly prescribed drugs, and, and it could be very harmful. That surprised me a lot. What I recommend to my parents and also my patients is to take pictures of your pill bottle on your phone. So then whenever you go, you can always kind of flip through them and show your doctors exactly what you're taking. I think quality improvement is one of the central pieces of Montefiore's philosophy around medicine. I think we understand that our first charge is to do no harm, and so it's so important to make sure we're delivering high quality, safe patient care every single time to every single patient. When these medical students come over and do rotations at Montefiore, we want them to also understand that theory and that philosophy, and then also make sure they're delivering high quality and safe care to all their patients that they touch. Measles, we said, was airborne, right? So what kind of mask do you wear for airborne precautions? What kind of mask is that? What's that called? N95. N95. So, here's some Ebola. Mix it around. When you go to take off your gloves, hold your hands like this. Good. So you've got two dirty gloves, right? So take this hand, which is contaminated, yeah, and grab the glove, but not your skin, right, from the top. Good. And gently pull it off. Good. And now hold this dirty glove in this dirty hand, and then take your clean finger, get it under the lip of the glove, and peel the glove off forward. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> you I tried. Oh, uh, see? You, mm, you, uh, you have a bullet everywhere. Yeah, because you touch you touch the dirty part of the glove. Yeah. <laughs> I think I better know what my resources maybe are of who to talk to um, about, you know, where to look, and also kind of feeling empowered, R realizing that some, some of these things seem small, but I, as medical students, we're going to have more time to pay attention to some of these details that seem kind of trivial, but they're going to be our responsibility, and we can really make a difference.